Hi, and welcome to the Cutover Platform Training Series. In this video, we will walk through how to create a runbook from scratch, how to edit the settings of a runbook, how to create a runbook from an existing template, and how to navigate around a runbook. Let's get started. To create a runbook from scratch, you must click on the blue plus icon on the bottom right of the screen. This will open up a settings box where you can begin to configure the runbook. Here, you can name the runbook, the folder where the runbook will be stored, and the scheduled start date for your event. You can also choose the type of runbook. This can either be normal or a validation runbook. Note that these are very similar. However, validation runbooks provide an additional dashboard that displays more data, such as a result of validation tasks. If any other custom field has been enabled for your account, they will show up at the bottom of this box for you to select. Note that custom fields can either be required or optional depending on their specific configuration. Then you just click on Save Runbook, which takes you to the Runbook editing screen. First, let's exit out of the account menu by clicking on the X at the top left. This way we have a larger view of the runbook. You can always open this menu back up by clicking on the folder icon found on the main cutover menu. The menu on the left side of the editor screen allows you to navigate across a few different sections of the runbook, such as the runbook homepage, the dashboards, the task list, the note map view, the list of collaborators in the runbook, as well as a table view of the tasks built into the runbook. The menu on the right hand side shows the configuration options for the runbook. The pencil icon opens up the runbook settings menu where you can configure several parameters of your runbook, such as the name of the runbook, the folder, the time zone, as well as the timing of your runbook. Digging deeper into these options, you can find other configurations, such as the roles, where you can add and remove administrators for this specific runbook. Below that, you can also see any custom fields that have been enabled for the account. These will vary per account and instance. Remember that custom fields can be enabled by a system administrator. Please refer to our help center for further details regarding custom fields. From this menu, you can also mark a runbook as a template. Marking it as a template makes the runbook unscheduled, but preserves the timing of all the individual tasks. Templates allow you to create drafts that can later be copied and used by other collaborators of the platform, helping them not have to create runbooks from scratch every time. Next. You have the display settings, where you can change the runbook type, followed by the details tab, where you can configure the timing of the runbook as well as add a description of the event. The next icon on the configurations menu opens up the teams involved in the runbook. This is below the pencil icon on the right hand side menu. To add teams and assign it to the runbook, click on the blue plus button on the bottom of the screen. This will give you a drop down of the centralized teams enabled on the account. The centralized teams can be created and configured in the account settings section by the account administrator. Lastly, is the comments section of the runbook. This is where runbook collaborators can leave comments on the events and comment on the runbook. The main screen is where you can add and edit the individual tasks of a runbook. To create a task, simply click on the enter a title and add the desired name. To save the task and continue adding, click return on your keyboard. Let's do this a couple of times and create a few tasks. Don't worry about the configuration of this specific task for now, as we will further explore the different task types and how to configure them in a later video. Once the tasks are created, let's open up the filter option and explore further functionality of the runbook. Similar to the account filters, you can access the, access the runbook filters by clicking on the arrow at the top of the screen. The filters menu seen here is very similar to the one we explored in the account runbook list. There's a list of filters in the bottom half of the menu allowing you to search through the tasks of your runbook, similar to searching through the runbooks themselves. The key difference between this menu and the runbook filters menu is that the folders are swapped for something we call streams. The streams are a way to organize tasks into groups in order to aid navigation and understanding of the task in the runbook. Every new runbook will default to this primary stream. This stream can be edited by hovering over and clicking on the pencil icon. To add additional streams, click on add new stream. To 
to configure it, click on the pencil icon to open up the edit menu on the right hand side of the screen, as seen here. From here, you can edit the stream, add descriptions, editors of the stream, or even change the color of the given stream. Note that any tasks assigned to a stream will automatically match the color that you gave that stream. This was a high-level walkthrough of how to create a basic run book from scratch. We will further explore the different task types and how to configure each one in a task-specific video. To create a run book from a template, you must click on the blue plus icon on the bottom right of the screen. This will open up the configuration box where you can begin to configure your run book. Instead of clicking on new, let's click on use template. This will add a drop down with the folders allowing you to choose from the templates already created. After a template is chosen, you can choose which parts of the template you want to duplicate. You can select between tasks and streams, teams, or users. You can choose to copy some or all of the options from a previous template. Next, you must name the new runbook, add a folder, and choose your scheduled start time. If any other custom fields have been enabled in your account, they will show up at the bottom of this box. Note that custom fields can either be required or optional, depending on their specific configuration. Then, you just click on Create Runbook, and this will take you to the Runbook editing screen. Once in the editing screen, you will now see a pre-built runbook that was copied from the original template. Using templates is a great way to avoid having to start from scratch every time and ensures consistency by allowing users to build off of pre-approved structures. Everything else about the runbook editor is the same as when you create a runbook from scratch. You have your filters menu on the left hand side that you can access by clicking on the arrow on the top left of the screen. You can also see the runbook navigation menu with the home page, dashboard, task list, node map, users, and a table view. You still also have the runbook configuration panel on the right hand side showing you the runbook settings, the teams, and the comments. Once a runbook has been created, you can navigate through the different screens to gain further insights on the event. The home page, Seen here, access an information center for the runbook, allowing you to add things like a summary, notes, and even external links that supplement information about the event. By clicking on the section, you can edit any of the underlying text. Note that not everybody will have permission to edit these fields. Then there's a the dashboard, which gives you a dynamic visualization of the performance of the runbook. We will dive deeper into the dashboard functionality in a later video. Next is the node map which gives you a visualization of the task in the runbook, as well as the dependencies between them. This view also shows you the critical path along the task, which is highlighted by an orange line. We will further discuss how to configure the task and their interdependencies in a task configuration video. The user tab shows you a list of who is involved in that runbook and their specific role as collaborators. Lastly, we have the task table tab which presents the runbook in a familiar table view for more consolidated viewing of all of the tasks on the events. Another way you can create or manage the runbooks is directly from the account runbook list. By hovering over the runbook, you can choose to duplicate it, edit it, or archive it. You can also select multiple runbooks by hovering over the dynamic status widget and clicking the select box. When multiple runbooks are selected, a menu of options opens up at the top, including a duplicate, an edit, and a mass archive function. The arrow icon on the left allows you to merge multiple runbooks into one. This is a great way to build in smaller events and then union them together into a larger initiative while keeping the configuration of the original smaller constituents. We will further explain how to merge runbooks effectively in a later video. Thank you for watching Cutover Training. For more information, please visit the Help Center on the site.